All right, so real quick, let me walk you through getting set up here. I'll show you how to do all this firsthand here, but for the summary, we're going to install Anaconda, which is a Python environment made for scientific computing and data science and machine learning. Once we have that set up, we'll install a package called Pi.plus, which we'll use later on in the course for visualizing decision trees. And we'll also install TensorFlow, which we're going to use to build neural networks and real AI and deep learning later on in the course. We'll also download the course materials from my website here and open up one of the uh, notebooks from that materials and see if it works. So let's dive in. Let's get started by installing Anaconda. Anaconda is a Python development environment that's specifically made for data science and machine learning. So even if you already have an existing Python environment, I would recommend that you install Anaconda separately as well. It's gonna save you a lot of trouble in getting all the packages that you need. Nthought Canopy can also work, uh, but Anaconda is what I'm using in this course for now. Anyway, go to anaconda.com and click the big friendly download button, wherever it may be. And looks like we need to hit download again. Select your platform, for me that will be Windows. And you want to get the Python 3 version, 3 point whatever it is. This course is made for Python 3, not Python 2. I'm on a 64-bit system, and you probably are as well. So we'll click that to go ahead and download the installer. And uh, 662 megabytes later, we'll come back when that's done. All right, the download is complete. I'll go ahead and click on that to launch the installer. Pretty standard Windows installer here. There's not a whole lot to talk about. Just hit next, and for the most part, stick with the defaults. And you do want to install this someplace that has a lot of hard drive space available. Uh, for me, the C drive is a little bit tight because that's a small SSD, so I'm gonna switch that to my E drive. Just do whatever makes sense in your system. Just make sure you got plenty of space for it. It does require three gigabytes just to start, and we're gonna install more stuff after this. So, you know, make sure you got plenty of space for that. And we'll go ahead and accept those default options as well. And it will take several minutes for it to extract and install all three gigabytes of that information. So again, we'll come back when that's done. All right, that finally finished. It did take a while. Let's hit next to finish up this installer. And next again. I don't want to launch all this stuff, so I'm gonna uncheck that and finish. All right, now we need to install a couple of more packages that don't come pre-installed with Anaconda. So to do that, we're gonna to go to our start menu and we should have an Anaconda in here now. There it is, Anaconda 3, 64-bit. And select the Anaconda prompt. This will give us a command prompt that's all set up ahead of time for what we need for the environment to run Anaconda. All right, so the first thing we want to install is a package called pi.plus. This will allow us to visualize decision trees later in the course. Installing that's pretty easy. Just type in conda install pi.plus, just like that. And it will go figure out its environment. You'll see a lot of warnings, by the way, when you run Anaconda. It's uh, normal. You know, sometimes there are just slight incompatibilities or things are getting deprecated, but Conda does make sure that you have a compatible set of packages installed. That's kind of like what Anaconda gives you. So don't worry too much about warning messages that you might see throughout this course as you're running the code. Errors, of course, would be a different matter. All right, we're going to hit Y to proceed and let it do its thing. All right, and the next thing we need to install is TensorFlow. That's a package that we're going to be using for deep learning and neural networks later on in the course. To do that, we can just type in conda install TensorFlow. And if you're on a system that has an NVIDIA GPU, you can actually accelerate this a little bit by saying TensorFlow-GPU instead. But if you're not sure if you have an NVIDIA GPU, just use TensorFlow, okay? Um, I do, so I'm gonna use TensorFlow.GPU. And if you do run into any trouble installing TensorFlow-GPU, just try installing TensorFlow instead. All right, Y to proceed, and off it goes. All right, that took a little while, but uh, we are now done setting up Anaconda itself. Go ahead and leave this window open because we're gonna come back to it. But for now, let's go back to our web browser and download the course materials. For that, you'll head over to sundog-education.com slash machine-learning. Pay attention to the dashes and capitalization, it all matters. And once you're here, you'll find a nice friendly link for the course materials. Just go ahead and click that. And down it comes. While you're here, if you want a copy of the slides, you'll find those here as well. We also have a Facebook group for the course available if you want to collaborate with your fellow students. Uh, it's not a place where you can get Q&A from me as an instructor, but if you want to just sort of trade notes with each other, that's a good place for it. 
And uh, we'll also find a copy of the installation instructions that we just went through here if you need them. Also, you can sign up for our mailing list if you want to. And there's also a book version of this course if you're interested. Definitely not required though. Once that's downloaded, go ahead and open that up. And let's expand the course materials there. Right click and extract all. And what's in here is a bunch of what we call Jupyter Notebook files. These are ways of running Python code interactively within a web browser. So pretty much every lecture in this course is going to be accompanied with a hands-on IPython notebook that you can play around with and experiment with, and that's what's in here. Also in here is a lot of experimental uh, sort of test data that you can use for actually training these models and playing around and actually making predictions based on real data. And that's what most of what's being decompressed right now is. Give that some time to finish decompressing. All right, it's done unzipping. So let's go ahead and find the folder that it expanded into. There should be an ML course folder now there. And let's open that up. And inside the ML course folder is another ML course folder. This is the one that we actually want. So let's go ahead and select that ML course folder inside the other one. And I'm gonna hit Control X to cut that. And now we wanna put that someplace that's going to be easy for us to remember and easy to type. So I'm gonna put this on the root of my C drive. And I'll just uh, hit Control V to paste it into my C drive here. Let that copy over. And the reason I'm putting it here is because we're going to have to type in the path that it's in. That's going to be C colon backslash uh, ML course in this case. All right, so now we have a C ML course folder. And inside that is the actual course materials themselves. You can see all the data there as well as all the IPython notebooks. That's what IPYNB stands for. It's called a Jupyter notebook these days. Uh, so let's go ahead and try one and see if it actually works, yeah? So uh, go back to our Anaconda prompt here. And we're done with all this stuff in the background. So what you need to do, remember to practice this, guys. This is going to be something you need to do with almost every lecture. To actually open up the notebook file for a given lecture, first you need to open up an Anaconda prompt. And again, that's under the Start menu, under the Anaconda menu. And then I need you to CD to wherever you installed those materials. So I'm going to say CD C colon backslash ML course, because that's where I installed the course materials. It's important that you start this from within the correct directory or else these notebooks won't show up. But once we're in the directory that we actually install these materials to, I can then type in Jupyter Notebook and that will start up the web browser that will allow me to actually run those notebooks. So again, remember, for every time you need to open up on a Jupyter Notebook, open up an Anaconda prompt, CD to the directory you installed the course materials to, and then type in Jupyter Notebook. You might wanna write this down, guys. Uh, you're gonna to have to do this again a lot in the future. And what this does is actually bring up your web browser. And this brings us to the Jupyter main page here where we can actually select the different notebooks to run. So let's see if it actually works. Uh, let's scroll down a bit. Outliers is a fun one. So let's click on outliers.ipynb. And a quick introduction to Jupyter Notebooks here. You can see that it's basically a way of running uh, Python code in line where you can actually see the results within your browser and run it. And it's not just a... Uh, a pre-made web page, you can actually run code in here. So watch this. I can actually click in one of these blocks here and hit the run button and actually executes this code and generates a new graph in response to that. So this is a great way to sort of interactively experiment with some Python code and play around with new algorithms. And that's exactly what we're going to do in this course. So let's really quickly walk through this example here just so you can see what's kind of going on at a high level. We'll talk about it in more depth later. But basically what's going on here is we're simulating an income distribution. So we've simulated a bunch of random people who have incomes ranging from, you know, $27,000 plus or minus $15,000 a year. And then to mess things up, we throw in Jeff Bezos, who's, you know, got a billion dollars to his name, probably more than that at this point, right? And you can see that that kind of skews our distribution here. So we like just have this like one little skinny point here that represents all the normal people. And then we have Jeff Bezos out here kind of messing up our data. Uh, so what we're talking about in this particular exercise is how to identify outliers like Jeff Bezos and remove them from our data so that we can actually get a more meaningful distribution. And that's what's happening here. And you can actually, it's a shortcut to run this whole thing all at once. You can go to the kernel menu here and say restart and run all. And that will actually automatically rerun all of these cells. And you can see that it actually works. So hopefully if you do that, you're seeing some pretty graphs. And if so, that means that you have everything set up properly. Congratulations. Again, remember how to get here, guys. Write it down. 
You're going to open up an Anaconda prompt, CD to the directory that you install the course materials to, and then type in Jupyter Notebook and select the notebook that you want to open. All right, with that under our belt, let's move on and actually start learning some stuff. Hey, Frank Kane here from the Sundog Education Course Recording Studio. Now, depending on what platform you're watching this course on, you might be prompted for a review of it right after this lecture or maybe the next one. And I hope you're enjoying it so far, but if you need more time to really form an opinion, there should be a little Ask Me Later button on there too. So if you're not sure about this course yet and you want to give it some more time, feel free to hit that and they'll prompt you for a review later on in the course where you'll have more of it uh, under your belt to form an opinion with. Really important to me that you leave an honest and well-informed review of this course because reviews are really critical to instructors like me who make their livelihood off of this stuff. Anyhow, I hope you've enjoyed what you've seen so far and let's just keep on going.